Hello friends! This is about my sixth take, intro take. I did most of them yesterday when I was all made up, dressed up, and I just wasn't happy with them at the end of the day. So I made another one this morning, still not happy. So this this better be it. This better be it because it's so it's exasperating, isn't it? When you just can't get the right shoot. Uh, the colors aren't right. The words aren't right. You didn't get all the information in. Ugh. So, okay. Welcome to another live studio vlog. And in today's vlog, we are going to be doing a, a hodgepodge of everything and anything. Um, I include some traditional painting. Um, include a little bit of our family Easter get together and I also let's see what else do I do I oh I cook I bake a bunny cake so come watch me do that I also bake my chile relleno um, casserole I call it a casserole even though she didn't um, but it's a casserole dish because I love chile rellenos. Come join me. I am excited about um, all this. It's going to be busy. And um, let's go ahead and get going. Thanks for coming. Before I start doing some Easter preps for Sunday's dinner, but I was in the mood to paint. I am wanting to finish my painting of a meadow that my daughter and I walked through uh, when we were in England in the Lake District. So I'm taking, oh shoot, I just touched wet paint. But I'm also painting this birdhouse. And I am uh, making it very similar to what my apartment complex is like. I've got the sage green on the top of the birdhouse, not the roof, but the top part of the house. And then on the sides, at the bottom, look at, I've made these, I guess they're called cobblestone type of siding. But yeah, I'm, that was kind of a tedious, challenging, but I think I made it. Got a little fence in front. And um, so this is how far I've gotten. And I'm really happy with it. I really like it. It's going to be cute. Don't know where I'm going to put it in the house, some, but somewhere. But yeah, that's what I am working on uh, this hour. Painting the cobblestones inside in here is very challenging because um, I either have to very carefully glide the brush down the side and paint sideways and it's got to be the right shape and it's very easy to not have the right shape. But then I also can go through the picket fence and that can be challenging too. So, fortunately, there's not a lot of uh, real estate in there to, to paint. That one was pretty easy. I don't know if you were able to see it. I don't know how else I can show you. But the brush is going in there and painting. This light tan color. Okay, I need to get underneath that window, so I'm going to go through the picket fence. Okay, I don't, it's not perfect, but that's okay. Cobblestones are kind of a rough edge anyway, right? I guess that's what you call this siding. I'm not really sure what kind of siding they call this. To me, it reminds me of cobblestones. So... It's been fun. Fun making it uh, look like my apartment complex and fun seeing it turn into similar uh, to my apartment complex. So, okay, I think I've done that. So, we'll let that dry. Now I need to get the white. Mm -hmm. got some white paint on um, 
no no I've got some gray paint on some of the roof do some touch up So this is my me time here, catching up on some old painting that I love to do. I do love to do it. I think I'm also going to, on the flat surfaces here, paint, paint like as if there's bushes of, um, what is that ground cover called? I just saw it. Uh, yesterday morning on um, some errands when I was running some errands um flocks yes flocks so I'm gonna paint some flocks all around the house
Yep. A little kitchen tip so here I've already cut some of it but this is what holds um, plastic soda bottles uh, together and I don't usually buy soda anymore but because it was birthday season Easter for us and I had uh, those big events at my house um, I had soda but um, for years I've been doing this because ever since I saw I don't know if it was commercial or a documentary, you know, all the trash and plastic that we have uh, acute, that has accumulated around the world. But um, saw one of these that wasn't cut up, but it was hung around the neck of a, of, of a bird. I'm not sure if it was a seagull or a goose or duck, but it just broke my heart. And they suggested that when you get these, you cut them apart so there's no loops in them. No loops, is that the word? Yeah, that everything is open and cut open. That way, if a bird were to get in touch with this and pull at it, it there's no way it can get strung around his neck and get stuck. It might get around his neck, but it'll easily fall off. So what I do, so for instance, even these tiny loops that are you see here, even these tiny loops, you just snip them open, and that way no uh, birds will get hurt. So I'm pretty much certain that all the loops and holes are cut, and there, oh, there's another one. Yep, right here. You just snap them and there we go make sure so that's a tip if you buy soda and you get these plastic um, holders for the soda bottles please 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 cut them apart before you either recycle them or throw them in the trash please thank you I smell good. Ugh. I gotta turn you over. This I bought at IKEA. Ooh. I would say a decade or so ago. I know we bought it before we moved to Michigan. And it is a main staple here in my kitchen as far as tools because I always grate my cheese as much as possible. 95% of the time I grate my own cheese because it's fresher, more tender and flavorful. If you get grated cheese that's in a bag, it's already lost a lot of its tenderness and its flavor. I just hold the bottom and grate away. And there it is. Mess free. And then when I'm done, it comes with a lid. 
whatever's left over in the container, I, I put the lid on and just put it in the refrigerator. I absolutely love this cheese grater. It has lasted me, I say, at least 10 years, and it's still in great shape. I got it at Ikea. I don't know if they make it anymore. It'd be a, it would make a great wedding gift. And another neat thing about it was that it was really cheap. I, if I'm not mistaken, I probably bought it for like around $5. I think that's enough cheese. I don't know if I need any more. But there we go. There's my cheese. Nothing is better than fresh shredded cheese. But I have um, gone back to try to finish my traditional painting, acrylic painting, of uh, a scene that we saw, experienced when we were in England up in the Lake District. 
Um, my daughter and I were going from one little town to another little town about a mile in between. And um, the little town that we came from was called Near Sari, and we were going to Far Sari. There's no explanation why they're called that. At least I haven't seen anywhere why they're called that. Our tourist guide uh, couldn't explain it either. But anyway, <clears throat> we are walking in between the towns and all it is is just beautiful uh, pastures and um, lots of lots of sheep and those uh, rock walls that you see all over uh, England, especially in the north. Um, maybe there is some in the south, mid, in the middle England, southern England. I, they were just prevalent more to me for some reason in the Lake District. But anyway, here, let me, let me show you what I have accomplished. I showed you what I was doing at the beginning um, when I started on this painting a couple months ago. I think it's been a couple months. But anyway, this is what how far I've gotten. I still have yet to do more. But I was so excited that I was, I was able to start um, drawing some sheep. Because that's the way they looked uh, when we were passing them. You know, they were far enough to look little, um, you know, look small enough uh, to recognize them as sheep. But the ones back here, um, to me, they, they, they reminded me of a sprinkle of salt and pepper. That's just, let me see if I can get any closer to it. Okay, there's the regular sheep, and there's the sprinkle of salt and pepper around this pasture back here. But yeah, that's the way it looked. Um, obviously more beautiful than what I can paint. But um, I'm going to uh, eventually, when I get done with this painting, um, put it up above my bed because my bedroom needs some, some help. I am continuing on this today. I've got some free time, and so I thought what better time than to work on this painting, and I still have to do some more shading, some more, some more, yeah, just some more stuff to finish up, but I, I'm getting close to probably, I'm probably 80% done with it, so pretty soon I'm going to be putting it up over my uh, bed, and I'm excited about that because that wall needs color, that wall needs something, but um, this will always remind me of my trip to uh, England and the Lake District. I have on my iPad, um, this is a, a video, but it's a, a screenshot, or I paused the video, there we go. Um, of us actually uh, walking between the two towns. Um, and um, I just fell in love, love, love this view. Um, moving the, the video along. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the sprinkle of black and white uh, sheep, maybe cows too, black cows along there, but um, that's what they reminded me of, was of black, of um, salt and pepper <laughs> sprinkles. That's my daughter there walking along the path. And that's the town of far, of near, sorry. We're headed back from dinner, going back to our bed and, bre bed and breakfast um, in near, sorry. And that's the town village that uh, Beatrix Potter lived in. And, um, yeah, she had the same view back in the day. It's no wonder she wanted to preserve all this, and thankfully she had the funds to do that, and it's because, or she's one of the reasons why the Lake District has been preserved, because she um, donated to the endowment and the trust. That's what I'm kind of trying to mimic, not the exact picture, but it's giving me an example of what it looks like in real life. Okay, here's another picture I took on one of our tours of the Lake District. It was called the Beatrix Potter Tour. Beatrix Potter had a favorite cow, just like she had a favorite sheep, and I'm trying to think of the kind of sheep that she liked. Um, I'll put it up here in screen because I can't think of it at, at the top of my head. But these cows here that you see right in the middle of the screen, let me zoom in. They're called belted cows. And um, the reason why they're called belted cows, 
I think there's another name for them, but I can't think of it. My personal name for them are Oreo cows because they have a black front. So their head is black and their chest and shoulders is black, but the center of their belly, their mid section is white. And then the back section is black again. So to me, they're like an Oreo cookie. But those were Beatrix Potter's favorite cows. So I'm gonna uh, paint those cows into my scene um, so that I can have them on my scene here. Even though they weren't there um, on the field in um, the town that we were uh, passing by, walking by uh, to go eat. Um, this is still in the Lake District. I think it was just above Ambleside, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm gonna draw the cows. <laughs> 